Hi, my name is Krikor Menatsaganyan, and I'm the Managing Director of Training at OnlineDelphiTraining.com. I also teach Delphi and take a personal interest in all of my students. It is my responsibility to make sure that you get the best Delphi and SQL training you can find anywhere and to get it when you need it. This is a demo of a live class with Robert Jennings. He goes by RJ from Miami, Florida. RJ had taken several classes with us but needed an introductory lesson on creating and calling DLLs in Delphi. Now please keep in mind that this class was customized for RJ to match his needs and his level. It assumes some working knowledge of Delphi. If you are just starting in Delphi, you may find this to be too advanced for you. On the other hand, if you have been using Delphi for some time, this may be too basic for you. Either way, please remember that we would be working with you at your level and your pace. This class has been divided into a four-part series to keep it manageable for downloading and viewing. To download the remaining parts, please go to www.onlinedelphitraining.com slash demo dot htm. Once again, that's www.onlinedelphitraining.com slash demo dot htm. If you have any questions about any part of the process, or about our training, please visit us online at www.onlinedelphitraining.com or call us at 678-921-0644. You can also email us at info at onlinedelphitraining.com. Hello, RJ. It's great to have you in class again. Can you see my screen and hear me all right? Hello, Greg Corp. Yes, I can see your screen and hear you just fine. That's great. It's great to have you uh, one more time. It's been some time since uh, the two of us were in class together. It's good to have you on, on board again. It's really good to uh, to be in class again. Remember, after going through the training with you, I was able to write that company-required program I had mentioned to you in only two hours. Yeah. And And the boss was so impressed. Well, the great news is that since I've finished your training, the uh, uh, my job is secure with my company. Originally, I was at a loss to find training, and either it didn't start uh, for a while or it involved traveling and extra expenses. And by working with you, I was able to sign up, get started right away. And as I was able to learn uh, from my office and saving money and time, so I'm really grateful for your uh, service and your training, and I'm very happy to be in class with you again. Oh, thank you, RJ. I really appreciate your kind words. Uh, you know, you're, you've always been a great student. Um, you've uh, been tremendous to have you as a student and to be in the classes. It's really been a pleasure to work with you, and I'm glad that I'm able to do it again. You know, you, you've you come a long ways, haven't you? And since we started uh, that day one, I remember when you first called me, I'm really proud of the progress you have made. Well, thank you, but I, I think it has a lot to do with your style of training. Um, you were able to uh, get me to where I needed to go in you know less than 10 working days, and that was incredible, considering that I had no prior knowledge of Delphi. And I'm sure my background in computer programming helped a lot, but uh, I still think it's a huge uh, achievement. And even better, like I said, my boss is impressed. Well, that's a great thing to know. Uh, once again, thank you, RJ, um, and I appreciate the good word. Um, but anyway, um, let's get started, shall we? Yes, I'm all set. Now, you asked me to put together uh, an introductory lesson to cover DLLs, and uh, your question was specifically to do with um, creating a DLL from scratch and then calling it in an application. So uh, that's what I'm going to do with you. Um, what um, we will be doing really is working on two projects instead of one. The first one will be to create the actual DLL. And uh, the second one will be a sample application that will use the DLL. 
So uh, before uh, we go uh, forward, is this uh, your understanding of what you'd like to see covered uh, in uh, today's class? Yes, it is, and that sounds good to me. Wonderful, RJ. Okay, well then, uh, let's get uh, started here. Uh, before we do any coding, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview. So if you don't see my mouse moving on your screen, it's uh, because I'm running my mouse. <laughs> Okay. So uh, it's really more to uh, give you an overview of the topic and to get you introduced to the whole uh, DLL. Um, That's great, because I really don't have a, a complete understanding of DLLs. Okay, well, great, and this is a good place to start. Um, well, I guess we can start at the very beginning uh, by defining what a DLL is. DLL obviously stands for Dynamic Link Library. And basically, RJ, it's an executable file. Most of the time, it's an executable file that has a .dll extension. Now, sometimes you will actually have a DLL with the .exe extension. Uh, for example, some of the Windows um, OS utilities and files have an .exe extension, but are actually DLLs. Mm -hmm. uh, but typically, uh, a DLL definitely will have a DLL extension, typically will have a DLL extension, and which stands for Dynamic Link Library. And uh, its purpose is really multi-fold. Uh, it's got several uses. It usually contains uh, procedures, functions, or resources that can be shared by multiple programs. One of its major advantages is that even if several programs call the same DLL, it is only loaded one time in memory. So obviously that is a big thing because it saves on system resources. A DLL can also be used to store resources. For example, uh, you can create a DLL of images that you can then use in your applications or if you ever have to do multilingual, uh, provide multilingual support for your application, DLLs can be used uh, for that very purpose. You can create uh, several versions of a given DLL for the various supported languages, and then you can call them as needed at runtime. Mm -hmm. The other uh, major uh, use and advantage for using DLLs is if you're in the middle of working on a very complex application. If you're in the complex application development and are constantly updating the application, for example, implementing the upgrades to users can be a real problem. I don't know if you've run into a situation like that, RJ. Um, I know I All have. All the time. Yeah. All where the time. I've been in live development before uh, in a company that is driven by development and sales, and the rapid de application development has been was a major um, major uh, aspect of the whole uh, setup. And uh, the difficulty, or I shouldn't say the difficulty, the challenge has always been: okay, how do you implement the changes that are requested, the upgrades that are requested to users? and still keep them happy and not disgruntled or frustrated because of the interruptions of the actual reinstallations. One way to do that is to use DLLs. Instead of having to recompile and deploy the entire application with every new update you, you create, you can simply provide a new DLL to replace an older version and the replacement would be a lot less painful, the update implementation would be a lot less painful in that situation. Of course, if you are going to use uh, DLLs in this fashion, you must always include all the methods found in the old DLL, the original DLL, and include them in the new version, and you must not change any of the original parameters, otherwise you will run into problems with the. You mean uh, it's not smart enough to know the difference? <laughs> 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 I thought we had a language that did all of that. All right, anyway, uh, I'm just no, kidding. I'm yeah, just kidding. That's quite all right. Windows so, will put out that language in the next version. <laughs> yeah, it will be able to read your mind. 
That's right. Um, so basically, this is really a very quick synopsis. Of course, we can go into it a lot more uh, in a much more involved capacity. But uh, ba this is meant to be more of a general introduction. Um, and uh, as we go forward in actually seeing how all this comes together, uh, RJ, I want to remind you, please don't hesitate to ask any questions if you need any clarification along the way. One uh, quick question without going real deep into it. Sure. If, uh, uh, if, if the DLL is written in Pascal and it has a Pascal EXE, it cannot be called by a C, C sharp uh, application. Is that what I heard you say? No, uh, that is actually inaccurate. A DLL can actually be called by multiple uh, languages as long as uh, you stick to the rules of creation. Okay. That would that would be nice. Then. And that's a definitely another advantage. So basically, uh, within Delphi, I can actually uh, call on a DLL that was maybe created in a C++ language, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, the the rules of creation, of course, uh, must be uh, maintained so that uh, the l languages used will know what to do with the DLL and how to call them. Okay. Uh, any other questions before we move forward? No. Nope. Okay, great. So uh, in this example, RJ, what I will do is I will create a basic DLL that holds some conversion functions. Uh, since you indicated that was just uh, an example right. you might be interested in, I decided to go with that. Right. And uh, basically, our DLL example will be exporting six conversion functions. Uh, we can do a lot more, but uh, the m purpose here is that you get the idea and concept of how it all works. Mm -hmm. So we will be creating six functions and exporting them in our DLL. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the uh, second phase of this uh, application will be... Uh, example will be to create an application that calls on that DLL. Okay, again, without going too deeply into it, overloading in the DLL um, description of the function works the same way as it does in a regular application? Um, yes. The, okay. the coding is the same. Uh, the, right. The, there are a few changes that you will have to uh, implement certain... We don't need to go into that. I just right. want to make sure that it did it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in the example we'll be using specifically, each of the functions will be accepting one parameter, and we will define it to be of type double, and we'll be outputting a result also of type double. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, if you're ready, we'll get started here, and uh, we'll get working on the DLL. Right. I've got my uh, uh, Delphi application open and ready. Okay. So uh, to, do, um, to, to create a DLL project, it's a little bit uh, different, and you will see uh, in the process. Normally what you would do is you would click on File, New, and you would choose VCL Forms application, which is what we have been doing, which is a Win32 application. Right. Now, in this case, what you want to do is instead of clicking on the application, you want to come down to Other. Mm -hmm. And this will pull up the repository. And from here, we will use a wizard that's already there for us, and that's the DLL wizard. Okay, I see that in mine also. Okay. So mm -hmm. what you do is you click on the DLL wizard, double-click on it, or click on it and do OK. Okay, I've and got some code. when you do that, you will see that it opens up product, and you will see that uh, it already inserted the shell for us, and it's ready to go. 